What's going on guys? Welcome to your 61st Java tutorial. And this tutorial is probably going to be the last tutorial for now on polymorphism. <coughs> oh, swine flu. So in the last couple of tutorials, I told you guys about the concepts of polymorphism. And I showed you guys how to do some pretty um, cool stuff with them. But we never really put it into a program. And we never really got to see why this was really useful. So in this program, I'm going to show you pretty much the core heart of polymorphism and what you can use it for. So let's go ahead and in this program I'm gonna make a method in each one of these classes that's just gonna say I don't know I'm gonna have like a line for fish that says make a noise um, I'm gonna have a line for dog that says make a noise and by line I mean method and also one for animal as well so let's go ahead and make the same method in animal fish and, no and a dog and I probably should have made an animal that makes a noise besides a fish but you know, fish don't really make noise, but that's not important. You'll see um, what this tutorial is about. So let's go ahead and make a method in here for animal, and we'll put public void noise. And since animals don't really make a noise, let's just uh, have something on a screen because this method is actually never going to be called. But I just want to make a method to show you guys it's not going to be called. So system out print line gotta learn to type print line and we'll say like animals don't make noise and this is pretty much a point of inheritance and in why we have this um, class right here because fish and dog are each since they extend this they can both overwrite this method right here so let's go ahead and copy this in the fish one let's go ahead and put the same method in here again we don't change the name of it it's just the noise one but it's coming from the fish class now and what kind of noise does a fish make? Put like glurp, slurp. That's what noise I would make if I, I was a fish. So, you know, it's good enough. Dog one should be a little easier. We'll put a method in dog called noise as well. And we'll make this one go rough. Not rust, rough, right like that. So now we have this uh, method called noise in animal. And we also have a method called noise in fish, even though fish don't really make noise. But this fish says glurp slurp, and we have one in dog called noise, called a rough. So we have this main method in animal, and it gets overwritten when you call it in dog and fish. So now um, that we have three methods named the same thing, let me show you guys the core heart of polymorphism. One of the main aspects of polymorphism is that if you can put objects in an array, like we did last time but we didn't really do anything with it we just added them into the array the cool thing is that you can put objects in an array and you can loop through that array and call the same method for the objects the thing is you can automatically call a noise for dog and when you call noise for dog rough uh, prints out and when you call noise for fish glurp slurp comes out and if we had a bird and you call noise for bird it would be chirp chirp if we had a class called cow in the meth con noise, it would do moo. So it's pretty cool in the sense that you can loop through an array of objects and call the same method, um, the same method name, but each method, since it's in a different class, it does something a little different. And this is my virus protection right here, so I will renew that later. Get on my way. Get, get. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to do this. Go ahead and make an animal type object, which is actually going to be an array. So go ahead and write animal, and we'll name it the list. And we'll set it equal to new animal2. And again, the concept, if we have an array of type animal, then not only can we put animal objects in it, but also fish and dogs since they extend animal. And that's one of the concepts I taught you guys before. Now we can actually put it to use into something useful. So now we go ahead, I mean, we need, this is going to be an array of objects, of two objects. So, actually this is three, but let's go ahead and make a dog object and a fish object to use it. I can go ahead and change it. Well, it's good. So dog D equals new dog with empty parameters since it didn't have a constructor or nothing. So fish F equals new fish no parameters for that either so now we have an empty array in two objects D for dog and F for fish 
So let's go ahead and use those right now. We'll just uh, do this the easy way, the visual way. So at index 0, which is the first element, let's just go ahead and set that equal to D for dog. And at the list and at index 1, which is the second element, set that equal to F for fish. Now let me get this out of the way. This is annoying. So now we have an array, and we have two elements in it. And again, if you watch the last tutorial, you can see that you can populate this array using add method, but this is just a really easy method for uh, demonstration. The next thing I'm going to do is write one of these enhanced for loops. And in case you uh, forgot what an enhanced for loop was, it pretty much is a special loop to loop through an array. So first you put animal, and then you give it a new variable, what's going to use x. It's kind of like the counting variable in a for loop. And then you write the array name. So now it's going to loop through the array, the list, and every time it loops, it's going to treat the index as x. So we can do things like this. X, which is the object now, since we put object in the array. So this would be substituted for D, the first loop, and F, the second loop. And then you should be X dot noise. And what this is going to do, in essence, it's going to loop through the entire array, and it automatically knows the length of it, so you don't got to worry about counting variables or anything. The first thing it's going to do is say, all right, what's the first element in the array? It's dog. So I'm going to put dog dot noise, and I should have rough print out on screen. All right, done with that. Now, next element in the array, it's a fish element. So I'm going to put fish dot noise, and the fish noise is glurp slurp. And then I'm done, and that's it. So let me go ahead and run this to all those, and you see rough glurp slurp. So that, like I said, is pretty much the core essence of polymorphism in the sense that you can automatically create an array of objects and loop through that array and call each method with the same name in that object. And you don't have to create a bunch of objects. You don't have to be like D, dog, F, fish. This is a real quick way if you had like an 100, or excuse me, an 100, why do I keep saying N 100? a hundred objects so you don't have to call a hundred lines of code you can just make this and it loops through so in the next couple of tutorials uh, I don't feel like doing any more polymorphism because it's kind of annoying and but I needed to teach you guys what like implements and abstract classes were so that's why I did this because in the next tutorials we're gonna be getting the GUIs more and some awesome visual stuff so thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. The next tutorials are going to be awesome. So again, thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.